Good morning. You guys hear me? Hello. Good morning. Yes. Hello. All right. So we're going to continue on the limit version of the comparison test. Okay. So here was the test in the end of last Friday's lecture. Where did it go? That's what we had here. So if you are given, so if you are given like two series, A N and B sub N, and each of the series, they have positive terms. So you can do the limit of the ratio of the corresponding term. So you take the formula for A sub N, the B sub N, you do the limit of the ra ratio we will evaluate that if there exists a limit and the limit is a, you know, because they're all just positive numbers. If the limit is K, K is a finite number. Then you can say, okay, you are A sub N, B sub N, they behave the same. Either both diverge or either both, they, both of them, they will converge, okay? They cannot have like a different behavior. So that's what we had last time. So today, let's just continue with that. We're going to show a few more examples, uh, see how we're going to use this. Uh, I need to set my pen. Just give me a second. My pen. All right, just hold on a second. There we go. And now I can have my pen ready. So let's do an example. So that's, uh, we're given two series. One of the series goes from one, um, I will say, let me change that because I want, you know, positive terms. So how about I do, yeah, let's do one equal to infinity, which is given by, okay, so we use three to the nth power minus two. And on the top, I can use one, or maybe I can use, say, maybe I use a thousand. Okay, it's just like a thousand over three to the nth power my, minus two. And I have another series, B, in, and which is given by, just the geometric series. And then we talked about that last time, and then you cannot directly use the comparison, the old version of the comparison test to do this. But now what we can do is we're going to take a look of the ratio of those uh, two terms, uh, A sub N and B sub N. You know, when I write some things like that, this basically tells me this part I just circled will be the formula for A sub N. So I'm just going to copy this 1000 over three to the nth power minus two and divided by B sub n. So this will be the formula for your B sub n. So, and we can simplify this. This one flip the fractions and uh, basically we have a thousand of three to the nth power minus two. And then we flip this on the top, we have three to the nth power. Okay. So we just need to evaluate what is the limit of this. And this is, Pretty simple. What we can do is we can just divide everything by three to the nth power. So on the top, you would just have a thousand. At the bottom, you, you divide everything by three to the nth power, you end up with just one minus two over three to the nth power. So how do I get that? It's basically you divide 
the thing on top by three to the n's power, and the bottom one you divide by three to, to the n's power. As n goes to infinity, so this term will go to zero. So eventually, I got the limit of a thousand. So you don't have to get the ratio to be equal to one as long as it is a positive number. See, if you, as long as you have a positive number, then we can say they behave the same. So you can write by the comparison test in the broad sense. Sigma a sub n will behave the same as will converge, will converge because we know sigma b sub n converges due to the geometric series. Geometric series with that ratio r is equal to a third. So this is how we how we're going to apply this. And a lot of times in practically when I'm using this, a lot of times I, you know, sometimes I check that in my mind. I do not really just go through this rigorous, uh, do the ratio, evaluate the limit. Some, a lot of times what I would like to use is you think about the dominant terms, okay? And the, with the, with the help of the dominant terms, I can do some estimation. So I would say I will do some estimation, Esti estimation. That will help you to kind of get the idea of whether the series will, will converge or not. Say for example, I have this thing here goes like 10, a thousand over three to the n's power minus two, right? And I kind of like as n gets large, really large, among just between three to the n's power and the two, this two doesn't matter. So three to the n's power, this one, that term will be the term that matters. So this one will behave pretty much like a thousand over three to the n's power. Then with this, this is a geometric series. So it, it will converge. So thinking of the dominant terms will help. Now let's do another example. And uh, I'm just going to illustrate uh, we can use this idea of dominant terms to get the idea of what series you want to compare with. So I forgot to say, actually, in the future, when we're trying to use the comparison test, the hard part is how will you come up with another series to compare? That's the thing. In this example, uh, you were told to compare with this B sub n, right? But practically, you need to be creative. You need to come up with some uh, series B sub n, and you know the convergence or divergence of that series, and it should be comparable to the original series. So let's take a look this time. So what do we have? It depends on experience. So that's why we need to uh, work on a few more examples. So let's see. Uh, we have a series, n goes from one to infinity, n squared plus n plus one over the square root of n to the six plus n squared plus one. Uh, we want to discuss the convergence or the divergence. Uh, thinking about uh, using the test that we just learned, okay? By the way, what's the meaning of that? So basically you try to figure out, you are going to, whenever you see the series, you are going to do the sum. So when n is equal to one, so basically this is what you have is three over root three. When n is equal to two, you have four plus the seven over, well, the number gets large. When n is equal to two, that's 64 plus five, 69. So basically you are trying to estimate if you keep adding all those numbers as n varies, so will the sum converge or not? Okay, so so I will try to think about, I will write down my a sub n. This is my a sub n. Get a formula. And I will think about as n gets large, as n gets large, what will be the dominant terms on the top? I have three terms, n squared, n, and the one. So n squared is the highest order, right? So say if you think about it, you have n is equal to a thousand. You square that, you get 
you have like a million. Comparing to a thousand and one, a million, that's the term that matters. So the top one, the dominant term will be n squared. What about the bottom one? You have three terms there. And of course, the highest order term into the six, that will dominate. So the bottom one just goes like this. The square root, you have to carry the square root. That thing, you cannot replace that, okay? So this is, you can simplify this. You, you can focus on the dominant terms that will help you to estimate this. And then we can just simplify this. The bottom one goes to like n cubed. So it behaves like one over n, right? So that tells me this series pretty much like the sigma of one over n. Do we know the convergence or the divergence of this? The answer is yes, because this is a so-called P series, right? And with the power here, uh, P is equal to one. P is equal to one, it diverges. So that's why in section 11.3, the P series is very useful. And you can, a lot of times you try to compare with the P series. So that one diverges. Then because this guy and the, this series, this two series, they will behave the same. So if this uh, one diverges, so does the other one. So this is how you, Think of this and then try to argue that in your head, you know, in, in your mind to get a conclusion. Okay. So we get the idea. So I want to compare this series with this series. And now if you really want to write down the solution, you, you know, the way to write that is first you need to tell people you want to first would like to compare with what series to compare with. So you want to tell people first, you want to compare with this series. Right? And you don't need to tell people in your thought process, how did you come up with this? We come up with this series because we were creative. We were thinking about the dominant terms. So we want to try to use this one. But when you write it down, you just tell people, I want to compare with this. So uh, now I'm going to follow the procedure of the test. So I know this is kind of like my B sub N. So how will I apply the comparison test? You follow the menu, the process. It says, okay, do the limit, do the limit of the ratio of A sub N and B sub N. So in our case, so my A sub N, which is given by N squared of plus N over uh, plus one over the square root of N to the six plus n squared over one. What is my b sub n? b sub n is right there. So you follow the test, the procedure, you want to evaluate the limit. So to evaluate the limit, and we know the limit will be equal to one because we, it's about the same, but we just want to show that, okay, show that, doing some math, some rigorous math to show this. So you want to do this thing here and it divided by one over n means you flip that, you multiply by n over one, right? So basically, so you want to multiply by n. So when you multiply by n, this is the same as n goes to infinity, n cubed plus n squared plus n or over the square root of this. There are many, many ways to do that. You can use Laplace rule, you can use whatever, but the thing is one way to do that is we think about dividing by the dominant terms on, on top is n cubed. So what you can do is you can just divide everything by n cubed. And also you need to divide by the same thing at the bottom, right? Divide by n cubed at the bottom. So on the top, when you do the, do the division, n cubed over n cubed get a one, n squared over n cubed is going to 1 over n. The third one, you get n over n cubed. You reduce that, you get a 1 over n squared. I'm going to do this stuff in the bottom. You have a square root, right? This is n cubed. So you divide by n cubed is the same as you divide by the square root of n to the 6. Does that make sense? Now, with the same square root, so you can move this n to the 6 inside underneath that square root. So that's the same as this one, right? So this is the trick here. So you have divided by n cubed is the same as dividing by square root of n cubed, uh, n to the 6. Now inside here, now we can simplify this n to the 6 over n to the 6, that's 1. 
n squared over n to the six, that's one over n fourth. The last one is one over n to the six. Now this one is good for us to evaluate. So when n goes to infinity, or well, I can just simply just write the limit of that should be equal to on the top, you get a one plus zero plus zero, two zeros as n goes to infinity. Here it, at the bottom, you have one plus zero plus zero because the numerators are all equal to n. So that's why we get a one. We can expect that because when we were thinking about dominant terms, you know, it gives us that we'll behave the same. But this is the rigorous, uh, uh, rigorous way to show, to prove the limit indeed is a positive constant. So now you can say by the comparison test. You know, you think about those two series will behave the same. Since, uh, which way should, what, what should I write first? And maybe I should write this one first. So you think uh, this series diverges. Um, it is a P-series with P is equal to 1. So one series diverges, and we have done the comparison test. So you write by the comparison test, this uh, C, uh, series will diverge to. So what does the that number 1 mean? Does that just mean that, that it's like, what does that 1 tell you? Why is just a limit? They're, 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 they're comparable. Whatever, they're, they're comparable to each other. They're of the same level. Okay, so as long as it's like a positive integer like that you get when you divide the two, that means that they're... Yeah, it doesn't have to be an integer. If you look at the previous problem, yes, yeah, so we have integer 1,000, and the, but if you look at the actual test, it says k. k can be 0 0.001. k can be square root of 5 as long as it any positive finite number and you will conclude they are of the same level okay so in this case we get a one because in our um, estimation we use dominant terms i have a very accurate estimation so they behave like one so typically you come up with one but diverse by your constant doesn't matter right so if you have like a middle class, I said the other day I said, the middle class, you talk about the range of the income, it can go maybe from like, uh, I don't know, 40,000 to maybe to 150,000. So the various, the lower level guy may only make like 40,000. The other one may be like a, making like 120. The difference, the ratio is the 30, right? Or maybe other things but they're comparable. They're still belonging to the same class. Then it's not like, I try to use the, not exactly the same case like this, but the ratio any constant means they will behave the same. All right. You don't have to get one. You don't have to get a thousand. You can get like a million. You can get like a 0 0.001. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's take a look at another case. Sometimes you have to be careful. Sometimes um, you m want to be smart. Sometimes, you know, it's not always you can come up with uh, a thing to compare with. So it depends on your experience and the knowledge about calculus or whatever the background. So how about this one here? So we try to discuss the convergence or divergence of this series, sine of, one over n. Okay. So we need to understand first, you know, we've been doing that. This is what I felt like in the past. I've been uh, teaching this series like for like a one or two months. And in the end, some of my previous students, they still couldn't understand what the heck is this when I say this, all right? So this one, when you see this, talking about convergence or divergence of this sigma, you have to say, okay, this means you want to add up the things. So when n is equal to one, you get sine one. What is sine one? One means one radian, right? One radian is about like 57 degrees, something, some ish like that. So it's sine one, I have no idea what that is. It's about maybe close to uh, square root of three divided by two or something like that. 
Now you want to do sine of a half radian, and then you want to add sine of a third radian. You want to keep adding all the, a fourth radian and uh, do this sine of one over 2021 20, radian. You keep adding that. Does the sum go to a finite number? Does it converge or does it go to infinity or something else? Or it oscillates? So basically the question is about this one. Okay. And now think about all those things we have learned. Say we have learned, I would always want to say we have the tools we have. Uh, we know the divergence test. I will often use divergence test. In this case, I have no conclusion. Why? Because my a sub n this time is just equal to sine of one over n. And if I do the limit of this a sub n, what do I have? And I think this one, because sine is a, a continuous function, so this is the same as you do sine of limit one over n. You can switch the order. So sine uh, one over n goes to zero. So this goes to sine of zero. So it goes to zero. But a sub n goes to zero does not tell you whether the series will converge or diverge. Only when the limit is not equal to zero tells you the series will diverge. Okay, so in this case, no conclusion. You cannot use that test. Uh, geometric series. Looks like when you do the ratio, no, it's not. It's just like some irrational number going on the sign of like a one third radian. So definitely not. And now the third one we learned is telescoping. Uh, no, this is not. The next series, you just go through your list, right? Okay, so you run this one. Uh, should we try integral test? But remember, when we try to use the integral test, you will have a decreasing function. But now you have sine function. We know basically the curve oscillates. It's your function is not, it's not decreasing, right? Okay. But in this case, maybe decreasing. But even for that, it's hard for you to do. Uh, well, in this case, it's decreasing because in the first quadrant, it's decreasing. But the thing is, uh, you can. It's very hard for you to do the do the uh, antiderivative. It's impossible to do that. So it seems like this one ha doesn't help. Now the fourth one we learn is the only thing we have right now is that we have to use the comparison test. So you always the more tests we learned in the future to handle. Uh, the question about convergence or divergence, you just need to go through your test. It's, yeah, it's sort of like when you try to diagnose, um, you know, you have like a patient, and you, you just run through what test you should I use? Or maybe you just go on your list one by one, just fi uh, find a way. So comparison test. Now to use the comparison test, if this is your A sub N, you got to come up with the big question is, what will be the series I want to compare with? So this one naturally, I think maybe think always think about try to think about the P-series test. In this case, I have one over n there, right? I just have a sign. So maybe naturally I can try. It's also a process of trial and error. Okay, let's try this. Will that work? So well, you just do the limit. By the way, this gives us some hope because the P-series series, I know this one diverges. Okay. So now the only thing I need to do is follow the procedure, do the ratio of that. So I need to do the limit when n goes to infinity, a sub n sine of one over n, and uh, b sub n just one over n. What will be the limit? So this one, you, you can also use the Laplace rule, but you cannot directly use this. A way to think about that, if you want to do let like x to be equal to one over, it's kind of like you think x is equal to one over. So the associated function will be is something like this. This one is the same as you try to look at the sine x over x. Your x is kind of behave like one over n. So when n goes to infinity, your x is approaching from zero from the right. So you're trying to do this. 
Now, this is one of the famous, most famous uh, limit identities in, in calculus one. Or you can just, you know, this, this is zero over zero. So you can use the L'Hopital's rule. So maybe a best way to do that is you use the L'Hopital's rule. So that will be the same as the limit as x goes to zero. You take the derivative of sine x, you get cosine x. Take the derivative of x, you get a one. And this one, you can just plug in zero for x. Indeed, this is equal to one. So you get a finite long zero number. So that tells me those two series, this guy and this will behave the same. So your conclusion is this series, double, it diverges. So I think comparison test is a really very powerful way to do that is an indirect way you try to compare with some of the well-known like P series. So try to draw the conclusion. Okay. Any questions? Now go back to this question. I don't know if any of you have, uh, maybe you have some doubt, right? What if I get a zero? or I get an infinite number like infinity. Why this comparison test won't work in those cases? So here I'm just want to give you some example. Just be careful with this. And that's uh, why in the, in the limit version of this comparison test, the ratio, the limit of a ra ratio, you cannot allow it to be equal to zero or infinity. So because in those two cases, you won't have any conclusion. Okay, so let's take a look of this two example. I have a, like a series A sub n. One of the series is just equal to one over n. I, I didn't write angle from one to infinity. We all understand what it means. So the other one is just one over n squared, right? Okay. Now look at this guy, the P series. This one diverges. And that one converges, right? P is equal to two. So they have different behavior. But let's take a look of the ratio of a n and b n. Now your a sub n is equal to one over n. Your b sub n is equal to one over n squared. So what we have is n goes to infinity just with n, right? When you flip this, this thing goes to infinity. So when n, when the limit does not exist or the limit goes to infinity, this comparison test fails because you see, I just gave you an count example. If this one goes to infinity, I can have like two series, they behave differently. No. So also I can switch that, just switch the row of B then and the A sub N as uh, what I just did. Now this time I want to call A sub N as one over N squared, my B sub N as one over N. And again, this one converges. This one diverges, right? So now if you look at the limit of this two, a sub n, b sub n, now this time, one over n squared is on the top, one over n is at the bottom. So basically you're doing the limit of one over n. This time you get this one to be equal to zero. So that means tells you when the, li the, the limit of the ratio goes to zero, you still have no conclusion because I just give you one kind of example, two series of positive terms, they behave totally different, okay? So, but as long as you have like a positive finite number, whatever that number is, it doesn't matter how big, how small that number is, those two series, they will either converge or they both diverge. And the proof of that will be just beyond this course. And this is all about this um, section, um, comparison test. So. We just need to do um, work on some of the examples, you know, a lot of examples. So for example, if you got like that problem and it ended up being zero, does that mean you just can't use the comparison test for that problem? You just have to use some other method or does that just mean you have to try another type? Yeah, you have to try one way, two things you can try, okay? Either you can try to compare with a different uh, series, right? Try and error. Another thing is maybe the comparison test just doesn't work. You have to think about something else. Okay. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like, say when COVID first came out, you, you didn't have a test, right? 
maybe you have like the previous test working for like previous like in uh, flu or other things but when covid first came you tried all these other previously developed the test you have no conclusion you don't know what that is right so you just need to go through something else you need to develop something new when you have a new test when all the previous tests fails you probably you can use the new test to try that i think doing this test the why you call this test i think they're very, very similar to the medical test we used in any medical lab okay and there's certain procedure to do that right so you load it up on some machine get your blood sample urine sample whatever how to do that then put go through that you get the test you get the number hey this thing number the readings of five typically when this uh, the range will be from seven to ten so you get some reading is five. This is out of range. So that's a warning, whatever. That's all this test, I, in my understanding, is about. Okay. All right. So now, if you don't have any other questions, we can move on. So that's why typically for this um, chapter, you know, the first two sections, 11.1, 11.2, the fundamental concept, the, uh, we need to spend a lot of time on that. But once we get the idea of what we'll be doing, the rest of that, they're similar. It's just a bunch of tests. Okay. So now the next one, what we want to talk about is section 11.5. So this one will be called a uh, oscillating series. And we will have a test for the convergence of this type of series. Uh, sometimes I just call them AST. I just invented that, okay. Uh, previously, the series what I've been doing, most of them, they're just uh, either consists of all positive terms, okay? Or maybe just all negative terms. We didn't do too much about like, we have some, um, uh, the terms in that series, they're kind of mixed, you have positive terms or negative terms, but in applications, we do have some of these type of things, right? Okay. So what is an oscillating series? Uh, basically speaking is uh, a given series, which has an oscillating series it's just a series with alternative how how should i say that oscillating uh, Alternating, is that what you're trying to go for? Yeah, so with oscillating, I'm trying to say, my English is in my, uh, I, my notes are pretty, often it's just a series with alternative, I don't know if it makes sense or not, positive and negative terms. Yeah, so it's kind of, uh, I will give you some example to, just to show that it makes sense. But this is it's also a very special series. It's not just like you have positive or negative things mixed, okay? So for example, you try to add up like this, the following series, say one minus a half. Now you plus a third. The next one is negative. The next one is positive. The next one is negative. So alternates, positive, negative, positive, negative, right? Okay, so, and you can always think about you, when you add something, you make, you make some money. And when subtracting, you are spending something, right? Okay. And you don't have to always start with, with the positive one. You can always do minus one and the plus a half, minus a third, plus a quarter, minus a fifth, and plus six, so on and so forth. You have to have these oscillating terms. Those are two examples of oscillating series. But this one is not. If you say, can I do this? 
I minus two, I have two negative terms, then I have like three positive terms, then I have one negative uh, terms. Well, we don't call this oscillating series. I mean, it's not an oscillating series. It's just like typically a series with like either uh, with both negative or positive terms. But strictly speaking, this is not oscillating series. For oscillating series, you have to either positive, negative, positive, negative, or negative, positive, negative, positive. Does that make sense? So now uh, let's see. The key question for this one is like if you do this forever, right? What kind of sum will we get? Basically, will it converge or will it diverge? How do we know that? There's only one way. You got to study the partial sum sequence. But before we do that, we're going to say what's, what will be a typical way to denote, to write an oscillating series test, okay? So let me just put it on the key question is, again, is the convergence. And whether the series will, is divergent. So uh, then, let me just write down what's, what will be the general form. Oscillating series. So people try to find a better way to denote, to write this. A lot of mathematical ways, the notation is the mathematicians, they were lazy. They tried to find a way to better communicate with each other, to find a way to write this thing in short okay so first you need to design some notation that will capture the feature oscillating sign the way to do that we know we can use minus one raised to some power because when minus one raised to some nth power when n is equal to even number you get positive when n is equal to uh, uh odd number you have negative so minus one raised to some uh, some power you know, that better captures this feature. So we always start with minus one, say we can use n minus one, n goes from one to infinity. People will ask, why you use n minus one? Well, the thing is when n is equal to one, you use n minus one, that means you use minus one to the zeros power. Minus one to the zeros power is a positive. So that captures the case. When you are leading term, the first term is positive. So when you have this negative one, this already captures the positive or negative sign. So the rest of the terms will be just positive. Take, if, if you take a look of this one here, this first term minus one, you can think about that's minus one to the zero times just one. The second guy is a half, right? But you do have minus one raised to the first power to capture this negative sign. So what's left is negative one times a half. So this one in that parenthesis is positive. The next guy you have positive a third. Yeah, positive a third. You multiply by negative one raised to the square term. That's positive. What about the fourth guy? Although it looks like negative a half, but if you pull out this negative one to the third, that's negative what's left is a positive force. So if you have already used the something to capture the sign, what's left will be just positive. So we always write this B in, where B in, where each B in is greater than zero. So use a part to capture the sign. The other part will always be positive. There's one way to do that. What about the other case? You start with the negative root number. Well, that's easy. Or we can still do this and it goes from one to infinity, but instead of using n minus one, I start with n's power. So when n is equal to one, the first term will be minus one to the first power, which is negative. So the first term is negative. Well, you have another thing, just capture the value of b sub n. So where each b sub n is greater than zero. That's the way to denote an oscillating series, right? Okay. 
uh, your a sub n in this case, if you say, well, previously we used this kind of notation, what is a sub n in this case? In this case here, your a sub n is a positive term multiplied by a term carrying, you know, carrying the sign. Okay, either this case or the other one, it depends. Okay. So I cannot show you the proof why the following alternating series test works. It's kind of like I'm not a biological guy, sort of. Why this COVID test, this thing will work, which is basically know they develop some like a primer, whatever things, it works. So we just accept the following series, alternating series test will work. We'll tell you whether the given series will converge, all right? So I just don't have time to explain why it works. Let's see. Okay, but let's let's just write down the test. Okay, so AST. The alternating series test. I probably I, if I have time I can briefly mention about why this one will work. Alternating series test. Okay, so that's because the, the situation for either one of these two cases will be the same. So let's just do one of them. The other one, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, for this one, doesn't matter which the first term is positive or negative. Uh, all you need to do, if you want to run this test, you have to do two things. So first we say if first condition your b sub n plus one is less than or equal to b sub n for all n what does that mean hmm, you think about that b sub n is the guy just behind the b sub n so basically if this if i use the bar shows the height or the value of b sub n the bar positive your neck, the guy just behind that B sub M minus M plus one is no more than that. So that will be shorter than that. So this guy will be B sub M plus one. And the next guy will be B sub M plus two. So basically you can have the height get smaller, smaller. So basically you have some decreasing series. So my notation is, so B sub N, this series actually is decreasing. So first you want to make sure check whether you have like a decreasing series. The second condition is the limit as n goes to infinity that the b sub n is equal to zero. So basically I do not focus on the sign part. I look at what that be the behavior of that b n. So then my conclusion is this oscillating series will converge. Right. So it does not tell you, uh, there might be some other oscillating series, it will converge, does not satisfy this. But if you do see this, you sh then it, it will converge. Okay. So this is called the sufficient condition. The divergence test, the other day we learned is a uh, less is a condition this is a sufficient condition okay so basically uh, it's kind of like uh, you see a square and you know for sure that is a rectangle but you do have some other shapes of rectangles okay but right. uh so this is this test only tells you if it converges or diverges, but could you, would it be able to tell you like what the actual sum would be? No, no, okay. because, because typically getting the exact sum of a given series is uh, no way, it's a lot of time. You, you really don't know what that exact sum is. Best thing is you can get some estimation. You can get some estimation. Only like a small portion. I would say less than 0.01% of the series you know you have a nice formula for this for the song so now i i have like a few minutes i just quickly just um 
showing straightforward application showing um, how to use this authorization series test. So when will we when will we use this test? Well, this test by the definition is in the future when you see some series starting with like minus one to the nth power, you have like authorizing terms. Then the first thought will be authorizing series test. Right. So that's when will you use them? Is it like a, and I always says it's the same is the same thing as when you see like the McDonald's sign. You think about like French. Uh, fries and the burgers. So it's just the instant things, right? Okay. So let's say uh, people will ask you the previous one, uh, whether this series diverged or converges. This is one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter and so on and so forth. Will diverge or converge? So in this case, you just need to know, hey, how am I going to use this test? There's some guy called B sub n. What the heck is that B sub n? B sub n is get rid of the sign part, the positive part. So this guy here, that's my B sub n. So first, I always write down the formula for my B sub n. Now I need to verify two conditions, whether this is decreasing, whether the, the limit goes to zero. So the limit of this one indeed goes to zero is really simple. Indeed, it goes to zero. And uh, showing this is is decreasing. So your B sub n is one over n, and your B sub n plus one will be just one over n plus one. Indeed, this will be greater than that. So it's decreasing. So B sub n decreases. B sub n goes to zero. A lot of times, sometimes I just Combine this two as I just need to show my B sub n decrease to zero. Okay. So now you have verified this. That tells you by oscillating series test, it converges. As, as for what's the sum of that? Can some of you guess this? Yeah, I can give you like maybe 10 extra credits on this. Guess that right. So, what when we have some of the weird ones where it's like i squared or over, over like four or something? That's that's one square plus one over two square plus one over three square, those things that's equal to pi square over six. Uh, that's okay. Different, but we're going to learn some power series. We know this one goes to the natural log of two, and you can do some numerical experiment to verify that. What do I mean? You can just play for fun, adding up like a hundred terms, adding up a thousand terms, see what you get. It's getting close to natural log of two. But this author reading series does not tell you that. Okay. Uh, I have two minutes. See if I can do another one really quick because this series is just uh, pretty simple. This test. Okay. And the way I really don't like this part especially for the people in, in, in engineering is, it's kind of like we just try to memorize all these things. We don't know why this thing works. We don't know, you know, maybe we know it will just help us to get some power series. But so, so far, that's the nature of this chapter. You know, they just take this, memorize this test. Okay. So again, you are given this test. And if you really want to, uh, talk about convergence or the divergence means people will ask you, okay, so the first one, when n is equal to two, you plug in two for n, so it's negative. Negative two squared over two cubed plus four. The next term will be positive. You have like three squared over three cubed plus four. The next one will be negative. Four squared over four cubed plus four. And uh, five squared plus over five cubed plus four. For no reason, you want to study whether this weird sum will converge or diverge, right? Okay, so that's this question about. So now, when I see this negative one to some power, authorizing series test. So the first thing I want to try is authorizing series test. And to use that test, I need to find out what my B sub n is. In this case, B sub n is n squared over n cubed plus four. And what's the limit when b when n goes to infinity? This is really simple. If you think about the dominant terms, four down the matter. So it's just n squared over n cubed is one over n. So in this will go to zero. Pretty easy, right? 
So now how am I going to show B sub A is decreasing? Uh, a straightforward way to do that, I would recommend you is you come up with the associated function for your B sub n. This time is x squared over x cubed plus 4. So how do I show a differentiable function is decreasing? So you take the derivative. This is a very straightforward way to show that. So you do the derivative. So I'm going to skip the step. I'm going to just provide you what I have. Uh, you will get x times 8 minus x cubed over x cubed plus 4 squared. How do I know whether this is negative or positive? Well, I'm doing this one. Um, n starts from 2, right? n starts from 2. So that means my x should be greater than or equal to 2, positive. And you can see when x is greater than or equal to 2, x cubed should be greater than 8. So that term, 8 minus x cubed, will always going to be negative. The rest of terms will be positive. So indeed, the whole thing will be less than zero if my x is greater than two. So that just shows your b sub n is decreasing. So you, we verify that. Then you, you can write just by automating series test, it converges. So that's pretty much about this section. We're going to, there's one more thing left in this section. We're going to talk about 11.6, one of the most powerful tools, two of the most powerful tests, root test, ratio test. Then we're going to move to the power series towards like the Taylor series. That's all for today. Any questions? All right, with this, uh, that's all. Thank you. Have a good one.